my back And now I'm wandering this landscape Like a drag killer Welcome to the third edition of Mountain Monitor, the news broadcast of Northern California. Today, stay tuned following the news as I will be featuring the Susanville Elks Lodge number 1487 as well as the formation of Lassen County and you will find out about the Sagebrush War. Start working off Thanksgiving dinner a little early and help out a great local organization as the Bids Running Company hosts the fourth annual Thanksgiving Day Turkey Trot on November 24th. Families and children are encouraged to participate in this fun 3.1 mile race which will begin promptly at 8.30 a.m. at Lassen Superior Courthouse, 2610 Riverside Drive in Susanville. There is no cost to enter, however, participants are asked to bring a non-perishable food item or donation for Lassen Senior Services. To be a part of the fun Thanksgiving morning event, you must download and complete a waiver and bring it with you. If you would like more information or have questions, please call Linda at 530-310-5013. November 17th was the annual Public Safety Night sponsored by the Auburn Elks Lodge number 1691 honoring local peace officers, EMT personnel, and firefighters. In addition to free dinner at the lodge, safety personnel were also honored by their own departments with plaques and certificates for jobs well done. The annual Elks Memorial is held on the first Sunday in December every year at every Elks Lodge in the nation. This year it will be held on December 4th. The solemn ceremony remembers and celebrates members who have died during this past year. Candles are ceremoniously lit for each member and relatives and friends are invited to attend to share their love and respect of our fallen members. Nevada City has several special activities coming up. They are having an essay contest on drug awareness. The deadline for students to submit their essays is the end of January 2017. The Nevada City Lodge's annual variety show is looking for acts to submit for audition to be included in this terrific event. It has proven to be a popular event and is always well attended. The show will be held on February 25, 2017. To get more information on these or other upcoming events at the Nevada City Lodge, call the Lodge at 530-265-4920. The Grass Valley Lodge will be holding its second annual talent show coming up soon. Call the Lodge at 530 273-9228 for more details. The annual Elks National Hoop Shoot Free Throw Contest for Boys and Girls is held every year by the different Elks Lodges at no cost to the participants. The participating students range in ages from 8 to 13 years and compete in their own age divisions. The hoop shoot contests run by Auburn Lodge number 1691 were held in Auburn on November 8th, 9th, and 10th at three different boys and girls clubs in Auburn. The Grass Valley Lodge number 518 will be holding its hoop shoot competition on December 11th at Union Hill School. Calpine Lodge has a date of November 20th scheduled for their hoop shoot at the Portola High School. The winners of each division at the lodge level will progress to district, state, regional, and finally national level. 
the 2017 Hoop Shoot National Finals will take place April 22, 2017 in Chicago, Illinois. Winners will be awarded cash prizes by the Elks National Foundation. November 12, 2016 was the date of the homecoming of District Deputy Grand Exalted Ruler Sharon Betancourt in her home lodge of Auburn Lodge No. 1691. Her love of clowns inspired the transformation of the lodge into a circus big top tent, complete with circus fare of corn dogs, chili, hot dogs, hamburgers, and root beer floats and was attended by not only many of the Auburn members, but many dignitaries from other lodges as well as district and state leaders. Auburn Lodge, number 1691, held its second annual Holiday Crafts Fair on November 19, 2016. There were beautiful displays of items including homemade soaps, wooden gifts, birdhouses made from wine corks, embroidered dish towels, hand-painted figurines, baked goods like banana and spice loaves, cupcakes, brownies, and fudge. There were crocheted hats, scarves, and vests, and of course, lots of jewelry, including unusual jewelry and keychains made from dominoes. The 2016 Chia Midterm Conference took place this year in San Diego, November 3rd through the 6th at the Town & Country Hotel. There was a full schedule of seminars that took place on a multitude of subjects, including finance, membership, law, insurance, licensing, scholarship, etc., as well as a banquet. Each of the speakers was extremely knowledgeable in his subject and presented the information with ease of confidence and humor. Property plus insurance was explained. What does property plus mean? That is, say for example, you have a devastation, you have a fire and your lodge burns down. If you're under 80%, they're only going to build um, based on the insurance you have. It will not cover the added cost you will have now that you have to retrofit to the current uh, state or county uh, regulation and laws that you have to bring the building back up, which could be fire, a lot of fire-related stuff. It could be sprinklers. It could be maybe, you got, God forbid, you had an older lot that had asbestos in it. It's not going to cover all that cleanup, so who's going to pay for it? You are. The lodge. Or you don't build. So, Property Plus was put in place to protect each lodge at the 80% level to where you now have built back the same the way you were, but now if you have to do all those improvements, it's going to cover it all. And that's the real, one of the main purposes of the Property Plus is to be able to make sure that you can rebuild back the way you were, and now you're going to have to retrofit because you don't have sprinklers, you don't have this, not, and that all will be covered. Now, it doesn't allow you to say, well, this would be a great time to add about 5,000 square feet. <laughs> no. Appropriate accounting and finance were stressed. All together, accounting is fun. Accounting <laughs> is fun. Gee, that's a good response. I thought the only people I hear from is John Hope, Donna Schultz, Larry Nelson. <laughs> that's great. Our own Northeast District leader, Dave Saltel, talked about ABC licensing and how it affects our lodges. Well, hello everyone, and it's great to see such a packed crowd, and we all come to these things to learn something new, and as I was sitting here, I learned something new, I'm going to take it from Ron's playbook here, is, is there any ABC officers in the building? <laughs> <laughs> Thought it'd be a good question. There is a wealth of information available to us all, and we are fortunate to have experts in each of the fields to whom we can turn in case of any questions or concerns. In the end, we were given a reading about attitude and life. 
Okay, before I close, I have something I'd like to read. The people in our district have heard me say this many times. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude, attitude, not altitude. Attitude is more important than facts. It's more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, or what people think of you. It is more important than appearance. It will make or break a lodge, a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing we have is a choice every day regarding our attitude. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change a lot of things. The only thing we can do is play in that one string we have, and that is our attitude. I'm convinced, and I really am, that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. So I recommend with you, you are in charge of your attitude. So we were off to take back to our lodges the information we had gleaned. Northeast California is the county of Lassen. Lassen County was formed on April 1st, 1864, following the two-day conflict known as the Sagebrush War that started on February 15, 1863. During the late 1850s and early 1860s, due to uncertainties over California's border, the area that is now Lassen County was part of the unofficial Natagua Territory and Roop County, Nevada. In the simplest terms, the conflict, also known as the Boundary War, was the result of General John C. Fremont's selection in 1850 of the 120th Meridian for California's eastern boundary. The problem was no one knew where that was and assumed it followed the crest of the Sierra Nevada mountains. In the late 1850s, with the settlement of the Honey Lake Valley, officials of both California and Nevada saw the uncollected tax dollars waiting to be had. Tensions escalated, wherein an armed conflict on February 15, 1863 from the two states took place at Roop's Fort also known as Fort Defiance. In the end, a truce was called when both sides agreed to conduct a boundary line survey to locate the 120th Meridian, in which was determined the majority of the Honey Lake Valley was located in California. Thus began the process to create a new California county. The county was named by European Americans after Peter Lassen, along with Lassen Peak, which is in adjoining Shasta County. Lassen was one of General John C. Fremont's guides and a famous trapper, frontiersman, and Indian fighter. Lassen was murdered under mysterious circumstances near the Black Rock Desert in 1859, and his murder was never solved. Lassen County boasts the volcanic eruption of the Lassen Peak on May 22, 1915, the southernmost active volcano in the Cascade Range. It devastated nearby areas and rained volcanic ash as far away as 200 miles to the east. This explosion was the most powerful in a series of eruptions from 1914 to 1917 that were the last to occur in the Cascades before the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. 
Lassen Peak was the largest of a group of more than 30 volcanic domes erupted over the past 300,000 years in Lassen Volcanic National Park. Eagle Lake in Lassen County is 5,100 feet above sea level, about 16 miles north of Susanville. It is the largest natural freshwater lake wholly in California. Eagle Lake is well known for its fish and wildlife. Around its shores are located one of the last colonies of nesting osprey and the largest nesting colony of western and eared grebe in the western United States. It is the home of the Eagle Lake trout, which are native only to Eagle Lake. The Biz Johnson Trail is along the Susanville River in Lassen County. The main trailhead is at the old railroad depot in the city of Susanville. Following the old Fernley and Lassen Branch line of the Southern Pacific Railroad, the trail winds 25.4 miles from Susanville to Mason Station. The county seat of Lassen County, Susanville, was founded by Isaac Newton Roop, a United States politician pioneer and lifelong member of the Whig Party. In 1850, the Maryland-born 29-year-old Roop, whose wife of 10 years died of typhoid in Maryland, moved to California with two sons, John and Isaiah, and his daughter, Susan. His first three years in California were spent in Shasta County in farming and trading. During this period, he also held the positions of postmaster and school commissioner. He had accumulated in that time upwards of $15,000 worth of property, but in June 1853 lost it all by fire. It was then that Roop retreated to the Sierra Nevada and to Honey Lake where he concentrated on his own backcountry holdings and nearly single-handedly erected the burg of Roop Town, which he would later name for his daughter Susan. In September 1859, Roop was elected the first territorial provisional governor of the proposed Nevada County. At that time, Susanville was thought to be in Nevada instead of California. The new provisional government first convened on December 15, 1859, in the town of Genoa. Roop lived in the contested county of Roop. He was elected in 1861 to the new Nevada Territorial Senate. After the county's dissolution in 1865, Roop returned to Susanville, California. There he became Lassen County's district attorney for two terms and stayed in the town that he had built and loved until his death on February 14, 1869. His daughter, Susan Roop Arnold, resided in the town as well until her own death in 1921, and both were buried in the town's cemetery. There is a mural depicting father and daughter in downtown Susanville at 700 Main Street on the side of the Nathan Building. The economy had formerly depended on agriculture, mining, and timber, but since the late 20th century has been increasingly dependent on prisons. The city has now two prisons and a federal prison has opened in nearby Herlong, also in Lassen County. In 2007, half of the adults in Susanville worked in these facilities, and 11,000 people were incarcerated in the rural county. There is a 2007 documentary film called Prison Town about Susanville trying to resuscitate its economy by accepting construction of a state prison. For many years, timber was one of the mainstays of the Susanville economy. One of the sawmills in the area was Bremer Sawmill. 
Timber loaded on lumber wagons was a common sight in the streets of the town in the 1890s. One of the tree lumber companies was the Red River Lumber Company. Since farming was one of the sources of income for the area, the fruits and vegetables needed secure packaging to keep them secure from the hazards of transportation. The Lassen Lumber and Box Company was incorporated in 1918 and made produce, packing crates, and boxes. The officers and principal stockholders were R.D. Baker, Charles McGowan, George N. Glass, and A.G. Brotweiser. Mr. Brotweiser had his hand in many things in the development of Susanville. One thing he did, since he was an avid golfer, was to negotiate the purchase of a ranch outside of town for the Susanville Country Club. Susanville houses an Elks Lodge of beauty and tradition. It is no doubt the most photographed landmark in Lassen County. On March 22, 1884, J.G. Leonard, a dentist and would-be architect, purchased a vacant lot from Sarah Hosselkus for $450. The house he designed was unusual in that all the rooms, with the exception of the kitchen dining area, were octagonal in shape. In November 1884, Leonard hired Charles Odette a local sawmill man and carpenter to construct it. Susanville, being such a small town, was not large enough to support a full-time dentist. Leonard went bankrupt as the upkeep on his house was expensive and many of his patients paid in trade rather than in cash. In 1890, William Green, who Leonard owed $2,800, was awarded the house. On April 11, 1908, Green's estate sold the home to Joel Henry Swain for an undisclosed amount. Swain had arrived in Lassen County in 1888 and he switched careers from farmer to saloon keeper. Swain's wife Annie, a staunch Methodist, disapproved of her husband's new occupation, but did enjoy the finer things of life that the saloon trade provided. In 1918, Swain died, leaving his wife Annie and four children. In 1921, a group of Susanville businessmen formed the Antlers Club in an attempt to form a local BPO Elks Lodge. In 1922, the Antlers Club approached Annie Swain to purchase her residence for their clubhouse. An agreement was reached and she sold it to them for $13,000. In 1924, the Antlers Club received a charter to become Elks Lodge No. 1487 and A.G. Breitweiser, prominent local lumberman, became the first exalted ruler. Susanville was a mass of color and holiday spirit as 500 Elks gathered to celebrate the new lodge. The Elks band met incoming dignitaries at the train station and marched them up Main Street to the new lodge. 141 new candidates were installed that day and 60 demits joined from surrounding lodges, many from Reno. Judge E. E. Gaddis of Woodland, District Deputy for the Northern District, was in charge of the ceremonies. Even the Knights of Columbus joined the festivities. The Susanville Lodge continues to be an active and beneficial organization, staying true to the tradition and principles of Elkdom and contributing to the support of our nation's veterans, our nation's youth through special programs, and through the camaraderie of its members.
This has been Mountain Monitor, the news of Northern California. Meet with me next time when I will be featuring the Nevada City Elks Lodge number 518. Have a great Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, and I'll see you soon. Mountain Monitor is recorded at Atwood Video Productions in Auburn, California. Cross the line from.